Uh, welcome to our March 14th, uh, two, uh, 2017 uh, monthly uh, stakeholder meeting. And we say stakeholder because of the fact that uh, we deal with residents, businesses, as well as nonprofits uh, and property owners. Uh, those are stakeholders in our community. And we are a district wide, no matter what other people say, we are a district wide organization. Uh, and we've been around since uh, 1999. We uh, were formed when uh, the community was thinking about uh, district-wide elections, and uh, we tried to pull together various uh, neighborhood associations to form some sort of coalition, and we asked all kinds of neighborhood associations that was existing back then. Some didn't want to join or participate in some sort of council because uh, they wanted to keep their little kingdoms going. Uh, but we, uh, we encourage everybody to participate in what we do because we also felt it was very important that wherever our next supervisor back then in 2000 would need to uh, hear, and we ended up putting together a platform for that supervisor, and at that time there were 17 candidates. And so uh, from then on, we've been dealing with the issues of the whole district, which includes transportation. You can see the green piece of paper, all kinds of issues that are planning, land use, uh, small business, and so on, that affect our community as uh, we um, move on. And our main focus is to deal with <coughs> low-income uh, neighborhood uh, residents, as well as um, uh, the working class, because um, all the other groups seem to have their own advocates. But when it comes down to you go to City Hall and you say you're a resident, many times you they, they, you over talk because you don't have one thing, it's usually money. And you don't have a paid advocate, you don't have an attorney, you don't have some paid advocate to advocate for your issues. Um, and so uh, um, our, our organization is made up of all those categories, by the way. And, uh, and uh, so uh, what we first thing we do is on the agenda is we do, do introductions. My name is Michael Nolte, I'm the uh, co-founder of the organization. And I'm, uh, I serve as the executive director, not paid, but I still do a lot of things. Uh, I found out that when I started doing this job, uh, I go to board, me I go to meetings, and I'd say I'm the board president at the time, and they'd say, "Well, you're just a staff person. You're just a volunteer." And when I went to other meetings in the community, I'd go, "Well, but now I'm a, I'm now the executive director," and they'd start listening to me. So sometimes it's just the title, but it makes a big difference. So, uh, first we go around the room and everybody introduces who they are. So, um, Mark, uh, Dennis Sizer, Administrative Officer, Only Life for the Great Six. Morris Phillips, President, Parliamentarian, Public Safety and Land Use Chair. I'm Rosie Dilger with Great Payer Advocate. Patricia Ellenmont with Apology. I'm George Dias. I'm uh, the Business Chair, Co Chair of the Alliance for Great Six. I'm Joseph Blaineal, the other co-chair, and, uh, and I own City Run Co. I'm Denise Dory. I'm a TV producer and host uh, for Public Access Bay Area Video Coalition. I'm Stephen Bianchi. I'm here from Cambridge, San Francisco. Taylor Jordan of Lighthouse Public Affairs. Stefano Casolato, SGC Strategic Communications. Ben Padilla from Ono Sushi. Ben Bobiel from Trader Joe's. Steve Murphy, I'm with Judges Career Court. I'm Cash, I'm with Warm Planet Bikes. I'm Matthew Dudley uh, with TNDC Community Organizer and also a resident here in the Tenderloin. I'm Mr. the Middle from the Lager District 66, also a board and a few other community organizations, and also a resident. I'm Jeanette Whitaker, and I'm a resident. Hi, I'm Deborah Thompson. Organizing, and I am also a team in 
Thank you. There is still two chairs, and I see two people standing up. It's just so not to make you too, too uncomfortable if you want to sit down. Um, and um, I'm going to close the door. Well, maybe not. It's kind of hot. Okay. Yeah, if, it gets, yeah. if it gets stuffy, it will be too noisy out there. All right. Um, uh, on the back of the agenda, I won't read it, but basically it says uh, ground rules. Uh, uh, basically, this is for videotaping, and we'd like everybody to speak in a responsible manner, to be positive, and to maintain, maintain a safe uh, environment. Uh, we will be doing door prizes, and food will be coming around uh, later in the day, in the uh, meeting. Um, and we basically say how we did with door prizes. Uh, we give everybody two tickets, and if you're about to leave the meeting, and we haven't done the door pack prizes yet, um, give your tickets to somebody else. And they're usually good door prices, so um, I'm not going to tell you what they are, but they are good. Uh, and then we'll have food, and we also ask you not to uh, hoard the food, meaning you just pick up what you, uh, up, you know, serving and wait until everybody else has had their serving before you go back for seconds. That way everybody has a chance to have some. Um, all right. So, um, Okay, so um, can I have a motion to adopt agenda unless there's any additions? I so move. Second. Well, first, is there any additions? Okay, then adopt uh, agenda. I so move. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. no's? Any abstentions? Uh, the uh, uh, is adopted. Um, so then, uh, donation. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So um, we are. Uh, we are a, uh, um, our, our organization is a uh, membership uh, organization and we only, two ways we generate money, one is through membership dues, the other is through uh, uh, donations, and that's why we have a donation help. And um, um, actually, you know, okay. Okay. So yes, we certainly welcome um, and, and encourage um, donations, uh, whatever you can afford. But in addition to that, we also encourage, you know, actual uh, members. Uh, and so with that, Michael is passing around membership forms, uh, and there are varying levels of uh, membership from individual, uh, organization, business. And so we certainly encourage people to become members as well because that brings more, more blood, uh, you know, more bodies into the game. organization. Okay, so so basically, uh, when you uh, uh, if you decide to do that today, or you can do it later. There's a envelope inside the packet, so you can mail in a check. Um, you have to go to our website and pay by PayPal, but either way, we need to have your uh, contact information sent back to us so we uh, can uh, keep you uh, uh, in our database and stuff and, and made a prize of our meetings. Um, um, okay. Um, okay, the next we're going to hear is from uh, Judge, Judge Murphy. Here comes the judge. Could you stand right there? Yeah, yeah. Just, just adjust this a little bit there. Thanks. Hi. I'm here to give you some information on the civil grand jury and to try to recruit you to be a member. Uh, so I know that's a tall task. Civil grand jury is a, a body of the county, city and county of San Francisco, that investigates various aspects of the city. It's a volunteer position. We need 19 members. It's it's a big time commitment. I won't you know, I won't mince words. You have to meet every week, and then there are subcommittees that you can be a part of, and then you can actually investigate whatever you want to investigate. <coughs> so in the past, there's been investigations about the some big issues like homelessness, muni, uh, the rising tides of the ocean, uh, all kinds of things. You, you, 
you know, it's just limited by imagination. So the requirements to be a member are, do you have to be passionate about the city, which I know you all are, you wouldn't be here, uh, be, and want to make a difference. And so you can really make a difference as a member of the, the uh, civil grand jury. We have uh, applications here. I'm going to, anybody wants one, I can hand one out. Would you like one? Good. Great. Thank you. Got one left. All right. I didn't know I'd get rid of all. So, could you tell me uh, just one thing, simple question? Who does all the writing? Do you get the people that are on the kit committee do the writing, or do you actually have clerks involved too? It's people on the committee. So, it goes through a long process, and it takes you know, somebody who really likes to write. So, usually, what the civil grand jury does is pick out somebody who's very anxious to write. They do a first draft, then it goes through uh, the whole committee, the whole grand jury to be decided. I'll tell you one of the fun things about the civil grand jury is you have a right to the subpoena power. So if you want to talk to somebody in the city and they won't talk to you, you can subpoena them. It's, really? It, it really is a lot of power. Wow. Um, and, the, and any reports that are provided by the civil grand jury have to go through the Board of Supervisors. And they're required to have a meeting where they review the reports. Um, if there are department heads, certain departments that are discussed in the report, those departments have to respond to whatever the civil grand jury says. They say that you know something needs to be fixed. The department has to say why they, why they can't fix it or fix it. So they, you know, there really is quite a lot of power. Question. Is there a stated amount of time in which a member of the grand jury serves? It's one year. Okay, thanks. So it's one year service starting July 1 mm -hmm. um, through the end of June. And as I say, they meet every week. So if you have a full-time job, it's often hard to be a member. If you have a part-time job, it's ideal. You'll have plenty of time. What time of day? That's up to the uh, grand jury. So typically it's during business hours. Like, you know, mail them in. Yeah, you don't need to fill them out now. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm here with uh, our community engagement leaders, um, you know, it's Lamar, Tammy, uh, Matthew, and Deborah, and they'll be talking about each one of the proposals here. So, uh, first off, uh, we're talking about the commercial space that is going to be added to the development that's uh, upcoming on the Eddie and Taylor uh, parking lot. Uh, currently, it's a parking lot, so it's the northeast corner of Eddie and Taylor. Uh, so TNDC development that's going to be built there um, finally after 10 years and um, you know just a big quick background on the development it's going to be uh, 113 uh, new units uh, 112 of those are for families uh, as far as for low-income housing if you're not familiar with TNDC it's a primary low-income housing uh, developer and so um, so if you have like any questions on the development itself uh, we don't have a lot of that answers um, all I know is they're going to start uh, construction this year, mid-year this year, and it ends in 2019. Uh, but we're here particularly is to get your input in terms of the commercial space that's going onto that spot. And it's about uh, 5,400 square feet, and um, 
if you can't imagine that, if you're familiar with Daldes, about two and a half uh, times the size of it. So just a quick background on this uh, retail space. Uh, we have uh, four proposals that are food related. And the reason why it's food related, where we're focusing on food related, related uh, businesses is because one of the major things that the neighborhood's been looking for for a long time is uh, full service grocery. And food access has always been an issue in the neighborhood. Well, 5,400 square feet ain't big enough for a full service grocery. So what we're, we're providing here is four different options that could go in that space that could still address food security and food access, and also maybe some other things that could help the uh, community. So, so just uh, in terms of the process, we're going through this community engagement process for about a month now. So we're ending towards uh, end of uh, this month and maybe early April. And so what we've been doing is going to different um, parts of this neighborhood and asking people's input in terms of which proposal they would like to see and other qualities and concerns that could come out of it. And at around end of April and beginning of May, uh, once we've narrowed down all the choices to one or maybe two, we'll have a bigger town hall meeting where we'll invite everyone else, everyone who participated and everyone in the neighborhood to uh, come to that town hall meeting and we can get into the details in terms of what qualities they're looking for for that proposal that everybody chose. And the reason why we're doing that is so we can, after we determine what people are looking for, we have a request for proposal that will release to um, basically the, uh, to the world and where we'll state, for example, if people wanted a market and say people wanted to make sure it accepts EBT, uh, you know, make sure it's affordable, uh, say and has supportive employment and we can put that on our RFP so that we can find a vendor or a organization out there that can run that spot. Uh, so in terms of that um, we'll go over uh, four proposals. Uh, they're a kitchen, a market, a food hall, and a community restaurant. So yeah and that's it for that and I will let Deborah talk about uh, the market. Let so. Lamar. Lamar. You want to do more kids? Okay. Uh, she did. She wanted a restaurant. I thought. Anyway, yeah. whatever works. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. No. We all know everything, so <laughs> whatever <laughs> gets in. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna need help. Hi. Anyway, once again, my name is Lamar, and I'm with TNDC Community Organizing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> like he stated, they're gonna build a building, 113 plus units, and the bottom level will be commercial space. I'm here to talk to you about uh, a market. One option would be a small scale for nonprofit store. The second one would be a nonprofit store or a co-op. I don't know which one would work better because I mean I guess that's why we're here to get your opinion to see what you think, what would work best. And on that note, can you explain a bit on um, which each one of the options are? Uh, let's see, uh, small scale, not for profit. Uh, would be a local business that would have a grocery store and or rent. It's something like the like um, dollars, like dollars. The stores you see on, on for profit. Okay. Non profit would be We don't have any. We don't have any here in the city, do we? Um, not that I know of, but primarily non profits mission driven. So depending on the mission of that organization, um, they'll take it over. So ideally you know they can keep the costs low. And the co-op would be where staff would pretty much set the price miscellaneous. Like Rainbow. Like Rainbow. Like Rainbow. Like Rainbow. Like Rainbow. Okay. So it's, you know, partly owned by the folks who use it, folks who work in it, and probably, you know, folks in the neighborhood. And like an example would be like Rainbow. Um, do you guys have any questions on the market? Behind me? Um, in Berkeley, Safeway has opened up four what they call small community stores. Mm -hmm. They're about 5,000 square feet. And what they basically have, they have a bakery, a meat department, vegetables, and fruit, and a small selection of groceries. And something you may want to do, can't find uh, anybody to do it, something you may want to look into is one of these community Safeway stores that they have that they're uh, uh, doing the uh, trial period in Berkeley on. Okay, yeah, that's, a, that's a good input. Um, yeah, just partly, you know, once we have the RFP, maybe Safeway can come in and take a look at it. 
right. they have to meet whatever. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, since since they're actually doing this, mm -hmm. they have they have the physical buildings now and stores in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. It's something.